Hello friends, my name is Carlos. I'm a professional drone pilot and photographer based here in Southern California. Some of you may know me as the guy that uses his drone to film white sharks all along our coast. That's what I've been doing ever since starting this channel last year. In an effort to bring you some fresh shark content, I'm introducing a new monthly segment that I will simply call Ocean Talks. What is it? Well, I wanna bring you stories and news about the ocean. Inevitably, this includes stories about sharks. Whether it's recent shark news, shark encounter stories, or newly released studies, that's what this is going to be about. I wanna cover ocean topics that maybe don't get the attention they should get. Now, of course, some of these encounters that I talk about will cover actual shark attacks. Shark attacks that resulted in fatalities in some cases. Yes, some of these are unprovoked attacks and we will discuss those events, but not all reported attacks are actually attacks. The same can also be said on the other side of the spectrum. Now, I wanna make it clear. I am not a marine biologist. I'm a professional photographer, and I happen to observe great white shark behavior often. In order to photograph these sharks, I do need to learn about them. I rely on my observations and the information many shark experts around the world provide me when I ask questions. Now, most of you who actually listen to my videos already know this. The white sharks I film in Southern California are typically juvenile white sharks. I cannot stress enough that you cannot paint the same behavior characteristics universally to white sharks in other regions, especially when it comes to size and age. Okay, so before we get into our first shark encounter story, let's get to the latest shark news. Unfortunately, it's not good news. There was a fatal shark attack here in California. It happened on the morning of December 24th in Morro Bay. Now, Morro Bay is considered the central coast of California. It is not Southern California. And I spend most of my time here in the South. So far, there hasn't been any indication that anyone witnessed this fatality. The last shark fatality in this area was in 2003 when a woman swimming with sea lions was struck and killed by a white shark. As of this recording, there hasn't been an official update on the type of shark that was involved, but all indications point toward a great white shark. But here's what is public at the moment. According to Morro Bay Harbor Patrol, at around 10.40 a.m. on December 24th, in an area known locally as the Pit, a boogie boarder was discovered having suffered from a fatal shark bite. The Pit is a popular surf spot here. Keep in mind, this is a place known for large white shark sightings in the past. In fact, the Marine Science Conservation Institute has a few sharks tagged on the Central Coast. They actually have an app that lets you see shark locations. Those locations are available when a shark equipped with spot tag surfaces long enough to register an approximate GPS location. But just 24 hours after this incident, the Marine CSI Shark Tracker app picked up a shark equipped with a spot tag and it registered its location approximately 24 miles south of Morro Bay. That shark, named Poe Girl, is one of the larger tag white sharks in their database. She's a whopping 17 feet long. Gotta stress this. The fact that this shark was in the general vicinity does not mean this shark was the one that caused this fatality. It is simply a possibility. Remember, there are many, many more sharks in this area. It has been raining very much in the area over the past few days, so I hope to see more information on the water conditions, the amount of folks in the water, and whether the victim went out alone or not. All of those factors are important. The beach in Morro Bay is open once again, and as more details come in, hopefully we will get an idea of the circumstances surrounding this tragedy. Okay, so let's get to our first shark encounter case. This case occurred in Malibu, and it involves a hammerhead shark encounter experienced by Dylan Marks in September 2015. It occurred on Deer Creek Beach. Here's some media clips covering the event. Some terrifying moments on the beach here. Scary sight on the beach this Labor Day weekend. A shark attack victim on a stretcher. A kayaker's close encounter with the shark bitten on the foot off the coast of Malibu. Catch and release fisherman was kayaking a mile off the coast of Malibu when a 10-foot hammerhead shark took a chunk out of his foot. Sounds scary, huh? A shark attack on the shores of Malibu. A shark attack in Malibu where even the local high school mascot is a shark. Now that's a story that makes headlines, but a hammerhead shark coming out of nowhere in Malibu? I've never heard of that. I lived very close to where this occurred at the time, and I remember it was the talk of the town, especially because of the hammerhead angle. So what happened? Honestly, I didn't realize there was much more to the story than reported until I spoke to my friend and investigative journalist, Kinga Phillips. So let's take a look at it. First, let's take a look at the beach. 
Deer Creek Beach. It's not actually Malibu proper. It's in Ventura County, about a mile north of the famous County Line Beach, a favorite among many local surfers. I spend a lot of time here with my binoculars and my drones in search of both whales and sharks, especially in the spring months. It's a place where Pacific Coast Highway, known locally as PCH, runs along the ocean. It's not rare to see a whale along the coast as you drive. Now, to get down to the water, you pretty much have to climb down a relatively steep cliff. It's not the type of beach that has lifeguard towers. Deer Creek is a popular kayak and shore fishing location, which is what Dylan favored. He was an avid kayak fisherman, and his specialty was sharks. In fact, his YouTube channel to this day still has videos of his shark fishing experiences from aboard his kayak. However, no videos have been uploaded to the channel in more than six years. More on that in a bit. So let's look at the conditions that existed in this area at the time of the incident. Why were there hammerhead sharks here to begin with? In my time here, I've seen great white sharks, but I've never seen a hammerhead shark. So this made me curious. I started to wonder, what in the world is a hammerhead shark doing in these waters? It turns out the summer of 2015 was unique. Water temperatures went up considerably along the Southern California coast due to what is referred to now as the blob. Yes, that's a real term. The blob was a marine heat wave that drove surface ocean temperatures beyond the norms. This warmth of the water, it basically shifted the ecosystem temporarily. Species like venomous sea snakes, oarfish, and hammerhead sharks were seen well into the waters of Southern California. That summer, there were many reports of hammerheads seen from San Diego all the way to Malibu. And consequently, many fishermen took notice, Dylan being one of them. He says that after hearing other fishermen had spotted a couple hammerhead sharks in the area, he was motivated to try and catch one. So Dylan and a friend parked along Pacific Coast Highway early in the morning. This beach takes some effort to get down to, especially with a kayak because of the cliff. It was a beautiful, calm summer day in Malibu. And by the afternoon, he and his friend were surrounded by two hammerhead sharks who then proceeded to circle them several times. Then a third shark appeared. This one was the largest of the three. And what happened next began the series of events that ended up being labeled as a shark attack. The third larger hammerhead shark took the bait. And like any veteran fisherman, Dylan, he sets that hook, effectively attaching himself to the shark by the rod and reel. Except he's on a kayak. If you've ever been on a kayak, you know that you're relying on upper body strength for the most part. Fishing on land is a whole different experience because you have stable ground that's effectively anchoring you down. You have leverage on a fish. But from a kayak, if you hook a large fish, it will almost always result in being towed. Can you imagine being towed around by a 10 foot shark? That's exactly what happens here. Dylan, he's holding onto this fishing pole and that shark starts to tow him around. He tries to get this shark tired so that he can pull it up next to the kayak and remove the hook. So after a while, this tug of war, Dylan exhausts the shark and he pulls it up next to him. The leader line is kind of long, so he has to pull it by his hand, but this is a tough thing to do. If you've ever sat in a kayak and tried to pull something out of the water, you know it's much easier to swing your body around and straddle the kayak. And this is what Dylan does. He straddles the kayak, letting his feet dangle off the side of the kayak. So with the shark in his arms, he cuts the hook out. The shark, who's completely startled and having been through this stressful ordeal, falls right back into the water. Except one thing is also left in the water, and that's Dylan's feet. This is when the contact occurs. The hammerhead shark bites into Dylan's foot as it tries to escape the area. This shark essentially collides with Dylan with a mouth full of teeth. And hammerhead sharks, they have pretty large teeth. So he suffers a bite to his foot, and he starts bleeding almost immediately. Having realized what just happened, Dylan and his friend flag down a fishing boat. They get on board the boat and are able to control the bleeding before emergency personnel arrive. Once those personnel arrive, they bring Dylan back to shore where they bring him up the cliff and to the middle of PCH where there's a helicopter waiting for him. The helicopter airlifts him to a nearby hospital where he undergoes surgery that night. Before long, every local news station is covering the story. The sight of a helicopter lifting off in the middle of PCH, well, that's just too big of a story to ignore. The next day, it even appears in national morning news programs. And while some outlets did cover the story much more accurately, the immediate coverage was riddled with fear and inaccuracies in reporting. This is often the case with the coverage following a shark attack. Now, as for Dylan, he made a full recovery, but he gained a new perspective on sharks as a result. In an interview he did with Shark Allies, he says 
he's given up shark fishing altogether. Not because he's scared, but because he respects them. And you can see his whole interview in the link below this video. It's an interesting interview he did with Shark Allies. But if there's one thing that can be said about the Dylan Marks encounter in Malibu, it's that it wasn't an attack as it was reported. It was a culmination of a series of events that could have easily been avoided. Events that Dylan himself wishes he could take back. When incidences like this occur, it's very easy to blame the shark. Are there cases when the shark is the bad guy? In reality, yes. They are an apex predator after all, and they can hurt you. Here's some stats from this year. There have been eight fatal shark attacks in Australia this year. In the U.S., there have been 42 shark bites. Just days ago, on December 24th, the U.S. had its first fatal encounter of 2021. With nine confirmed deaths in 2021 so far, it's still worth noting that a shark bite is a very rare occurrence. Compare that to other animals, like the saw-scaled viper. According to BBC, it kills about 5,000 humans per year. 5,000. As someone with ophidiophobia, that's the fear of snakes, by the way, that number is absolutely terrifying but I would never ever condone the killing of snakes because I recognize they have a purpose in our ecosystem. In fact, I tried to learn as much as possible about them instead. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If anything, it's a preview of things to come. I will be bringing you plenty of shark footage in the future and I look forward to having more discussions about the ocean with you. And please, if you have a story you want me to look into or if you have an idea about a topic you'd like to see me cover, as long as it's not snakes, please let me know. And as always, I appreciate your likes and your subscription. I've got sharks to go film now. Hopefully I get some fresh content for you and I'll see you in the future.